everybody. Welcome to Muse. We are back for another episode, another interview with For La Soga Salvation. We got director, actor, star. I don't know what else he did on this movie, but <laughs> a lot. Manny Perez. <laughs> and we also got star Sarah Jorge Leon. Manny, let's start with you first. What was it about coming back to the role and what was it about taking over the reins of being a director, producer, everything else that you did with this? Well, uh, I'll tell you the reason why. Uh came back to La Soga, the character, just because of his uh, past. He has a beautiful past, I hate to say it, but is a man who was a, who was a sicario, a hitman, and, uh, and also how he grew up. He was, a, he was a butcher, he was the son of a butcher. There's so much to write about that. And I wanted to sort of take that man and make, and make that man your common, your common normal man who's trying to get by, find love in his life, mm-hmm. and live up, uh, 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 trying to find the perfect life, but his past haunts him. And to mm-hmm. me, I just thought, wow, there's so much to write. The reason why I sort of directed this film, well, why? Because it was a low budget film and I couldn't find mm-hmm. a director that could come on board to do it. And the way I write, I, I write very visual. And I'm like, you know what? For me to explain this to someone else, I'd rather just shoot it myself. And since I've been an actor for such a long time mm-hmm. and I've taken and learned so much from different directors, I said, you know what? I think I could do this. And really it was an amazing experience. Exactly. And that's the best way to do it. Like if you can't find anybody else to do it, do it yourself and see how it comes out. And it came out great. Sarah, what yeah. made you want to be a part of this, this world of La Soga? Well, um, I've always been a fan of Manny's work um, as an actor. I've seen his work grow and I've seen his career um, grow as well. And, and I've always admired him uh, as a creator. So um, when he mentioned the opportunity of auditioning for La Sola Salvation, I was very excited. And then once I read the script and I, and I saw how, um, how personal the story was for him, it really motivated me to um, want to do this. I, 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 I really admired the, the heart and the time he had put into developing this story. And it, it felt that he knew these characters really well. So um, being a part of it was a, a, a gift and, and an opportunity for me to, to meet a community of creators and um, on screen and off screen that are um, incredibly talented and um, dedicated to their craft. So to me, it was a, a, an extraordinary experience and I'm very grateful that I got to do it. Awesome. And what was it like working together? Not only because Manny, you have to do multiple jobs while you're doing your own acting. But also, how was it for you, Sarah, to have to be to be able to play off of that and be able to to did you work through the lines and then stop and then try and like make the adjustments? Or was it something that if you saw something, Manny, would you stop? I guess it's a question for both of you. Well, I, I'll tell you what was amazing about working with Sarah is that we actually rehearsed prior to getting on the set. So mm-hmm. that rehearsal, and we spoke all the time about the character development. So when we got to the set, we were so right on. Um, and that really helped me as a, as, a, as a director looking at the actor, me being the actor. So it's a little odd, but the rehearsal process, the prepping process prior to shooting really helped so much. Um, and it was amazing working with, with Sarah as an actress, she's, a, she's beautiful and, and she brings such different colors to that character. Um, to me, the character of Leah, which Sarah plays, is Sarah's, is, is, is El Sicario's Ricito's conscience. And when her conscience, when his conscience is not around, which is her, he becomes this monster. That's basically how I, yeah. I uh, when I wrote this, I was thinking about the development of the character. And Sarah, what was it like? Because um, because it's a, it's like when you're you're usually used to it's it's rare. Let's put it this way that a rat, that you're doing act yet you have an actor director who's on set who's doing everything. Mm-hmm. And when it does happen, I wonder if on the actor side how hard it, is it is it difficult or do you find it easier because you know you have somebody who's actually directing who's an actor who knows how to relate with the actor. Well, I think like in, 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 as Manny said, for us, the process of rehearsal was essential to be ready to kind of not have to be um, 
getting to know the relationship on set. We already knew what these people meant to each other and what they expected from each other and how they lived their life together. So whether you change the wordings or the angles or, or, or whatever, that was just uh, like the superficial stuff, mm -hmm. but the actual essence of what binded these two people together, we worked on before getting to set. So I feel that because we did that homework, it was easier to flow with the multiple hats that Manny had to wear. And yes, I, I, as you said, I do agree that when you get a director that's also an actor, I think it, it is a, an advantageous point of view for, for the actor being directed by that director that's an actor because um, there's definitely a, a language that you speak that's similar. Sometimes a director might not, um, might want something but might not be able to um, accurately verbalize what they need because they're speaking from a director's point of view whereas I think Manny can do both which is yeah. definitely a plus. Yeah and that's what I like about the film. It, it has an independent film feel but it also feels like a big budget motion picture that is action-packed fun you love it it's a thrill ride from beginning to end and that's what I love uh, about this film it, it's just it's just, it's a fun popcorn film and this is the type of film thank I want to sit down and, and watch and it's and it's oh, thank and, you and, thank you yeah and what was it like like and this is the thing too it's it's a, a, a majority Latin Latino cast. Like, yeah. what is it, how important is it for, to have these type of feeling, to have that, to have a Latino, all Latino cast? Well, well, for me personally, you know, I've been in the industry for such a long time and I'm always waiting for the phone to ring because I'm hoping the Hollywood will give me an opportunity, an opportunity. And I feel like I just have to create, we have to create our own opportunity as Latinos. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to yeah. make sure that this film, La Soga represents uh, 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 well, also the La, the La Soga character comes from the Caribbean, from the Dominican Republic. So he mm. lives in an area where most people that live there are Latinos, are Dominicans. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that the whole cast was mostly Latinos. Um, and that was a plus. Plus, I also wanted the character to speak like how we speak Spanglish. Mm -hmm. it's, not just yeah. it's, it's not just Spanish per se, it's a mix mm. of Spanish and English. And mm -hmm. I wanted to reflect that as part of our culture because that's, I feel like that's part of our culture that I don't see much in Hollywood films about mm -hmm. Latinos. Yeah, yeah and to, I agree to, with you. To piggyback on that, I feel like um, Manny created something that speaks from a very authentic place and, and that has a lot of value, especially now when we're getting more exposure as a, as a Latino community um, onto the big screen and all mm -hmm. these other media outlets to have someone speak from, from their own truth and, and do it with um, respect and, and, um, and putting us in a light that's not immediately stereotyped, but really like paying attention to detail and to, to the uniqueness of our idiosyncrasies, I think is um, a, a gift right now, mm -hmm. which I think he achieves. And I agree with you both, and I agree with you guys completely because of the fact that it's rare that you see Spanglish being used, television, anything. And uh, being somebody who was who's Latino, who was born here, my Spanish is not that good. So, so Spanish and Spanglish <laughs> is, is my normal vocabulary. And when I see it on film, it, it, it brings a, co a connection. Um, final question before we end this, how can people see the film? Because it is gonna be in theaters, but it's also gonna be on video demand on demand, how could they see it on video on demand? What platforms are gonna be able to uh, purchase? Great, it, it comes out the 28th of January, which is next Friday uh, in limited theaters released. Uh, I think it's New York, Rhode Island, LA, Boston, and, but it's gonna be on demand, on video on demand mm -hmm. everywhere, which means that if you have Spectrum, Spectrum has video on demand. If you have uh, Cox, if you have Verizon, whomever is your cable carrier, they have on demand. You can see it there from your home. Great, awesome. Sarah, Manny, thank you so much for being a part thank of this, so uh, being a part of our 10th anniversary as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing the film next week. We're gonna put links that you could actually be able to find it and how you could be able to get your film on demand as well as what theaters will be showing it. Sarah, Manny, thank you so much for everything. Really appreciate it. 
Thank, Thank you, so you Michael. Thank you very much. Pablo. Cheers.